What is going on, everyone? Today, I wanted to talk about the August 28th patch notes. So this is hot off the press. I am seeing this for the first time, just like you are. Or maybe you already seen it and now you're watching this video for my reaction. Well, hello. This is my reactions to this patch notes. The reason why this patch note is amazing, or hopefully amazing, is because we get to see if the nerfs to the bosses are good. That includes a con, that includes Thamine, and that includes Echidna. All right, so before we start, 7.4% of people subscribe to this channel. Shout outs to you all. But I believe that we can go higher. I have a dream that we can get to 10%. Can we do that? So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. If not, subscribe at the end after you enjoy the content. Let's get started. Now, before I talk about the patch notes, I kind of wanted to do my own predictions. And I'm sorry if you're like, oh, just get with the patch notes already. I'll link the patch notes in the description so you can read it. If you're here for me and my reactions and what my, my thinking process is, then hello. Stick with this video and let's get started with the notepad. Okay, so my trusty old notepad here. So let's start with a con. So for a con, I can think of multiple problems already. So with gate one, uh, the first thing that I'm really frustrated about is the retal, re not relations, retaliation patterns if someone gets hit by yellow you guys know this right so if you recruit a gun lancer destroyer or breaker and they just tank the yellow skill everybody gets hit by the follow-up pattern i think this is really toxic it also makes gun lancers and destroyers less uh desirable in these raids i don't want a class to be left out let's not do that Get rid of these. Number two. Uh, let's see here. The spears on the ground mech. So I'm trying to go in order here based on... Like I'm replaying a raid in my head and trying to go in order of what I think is annoying. The spears on the ground mech where you have to go in there and that's the safe spot. Uh, that thing does, does way too much tick damage. Making you rely on support shield. Not support, support shield. Like, oh, really? Why is that a thing? Doing the mech properly gets you tick damage? I think they should just remove tick damage overall, in my opinion. If you do the mech properly, you shouldn't be able to take any damage. All right, number three. Um, oh, yes. If someone misses their own black or green blob... You know, the things that you hit um, in the, uh, the cardinal places as well as the, uh, the corners. Those ones, you only take one of those. If you miss it, punish them with the two blobs. Why is everyone nearby also affected? Right? You did your mech properly, but you get punished. You're going to constantly get those stacks and you're going to slowly bleed out to death. Why? You did the mech properly, you should be rewarded for that. The person that didn't do the mech properly, they should be the one that's punished. I think this is pretty standard, no? Anyway, uh, the fourth thing I can think of is stagger. Stagger is too hard uh, after the purification. It, it, it's a little too tight, in my opinion. Like, yes, is it doable? Of course it's doable. I've done countless acons had no problem if everybody knows what they're doing it is easy but if you ever meet those dps goblins or the the new players that don't really know as much you know about what are their highest stagger skills you're gonna have a pretty tough time i think this should be a little bit less difficult for the new players since most of the veterans have moved on from a con by now okay other than that i think everything else is pretty fair like da -da 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 -da, i'm trying to think uh yeah i think everything else is pretty fair these are my four for gate one let's talk about gate two so for gate two omg can you 
Get rid of the red eyeball mech that skips and hops on every single player. You know that thing that no, no matter what, you're going to get it, right? It spreads around and... Yes, you can kind of like be at a further distance, then you'll never reach it. But that's kind of rat behavior. You're just going to be tossing it between two people. And then they're going to get charmed. Or I guess in this case, it's more like poisoned or whatever. Like, why do we need that? Right? There should be a way to combat it. Like, have a system set in place where, oh, if you don't do this, then you will be punished with the red mech. If you do everything correctly, then why are we being punished in the first place? I think that's really stupid. Uh, but you guys can let me know if I'm, you know, talking out of my A here. Uh, okay. Those green little shrimps, YouTube friendly, by the way, during the football mech need to either go or they need to, they needs, they need to stop making them so fast and uh, fear for like blah, 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 seconds, you know, like oh, why, why? Number three, uh, let's see, nerf the destruction check at X zero. It's too tight. Even with a few people alive, they should be able to clear it easily as long as they have Koro and destruction bombs right like i i survived and let's say my support survived and then another dps survived the three of us should theoretically be able to clear this and now if we get all the counters and perfectly placed corrosive and destruction all during the same window yeah it, it might be but asking for the perfect play never never a good thing so that's that's gate two okay gate three is where it's at Right, so gate one and gate two, if they don't change anything there, I'm not gonna really complain. You know, it's it's part of the game to kind of be challenging, but these are kind of the annoying parts of gate one and gate two. Gate three, however, does need some changes. So let's let's talk about this. The first thing I could think of: more lenient stagger check during first lines mech. So either this or so I'll put it at two to or less axes spawning so much that there's nowhere to run there have been you know times that i can count on my hands where i had nowhere to run just simple as that like why there should always be a safe spot no matter what uh number three the stupid purple line mech needs to be able to be picked up easier like holy damn i don't know if that's youtube friendly but i'm i'm just gonna say it because man the amount of times i'm waddling all the way to the right with the purple line and i am so slow by the way can we can we remove some of the slow too to this it's so slow, and then when somebody tries to pick up the purple line, they can't. They're just walking up and down, up and down, up and down, and they're not able to get it. Let it be easier to get the dang line. Jesus. Okay, next. Okay, statues. I think during, during statues, why does the black laser hurt so much? If you aren't at 12 or 6 a clock position have fun eating lasers dodging axes and dodging puddles woohoo yeah stop just just you know nerf the black line like why is it like we're oh, oh don't forget there's like a pulsating thing that Khan does that also does damage you're taking way too much damage during this phase Give us some slack. Uh, next. Number five. Let's see. Ooh. The, the, uh, the red, green, black pattern mech. Like, I would just love it if that was just completely removed. But, you know, I, I don't see them removing it. Uh, 
The red one is pretty self-explanatory. You know, you want to get as far as possible. The green one is so annoying because of DPS goblins. If everybody just did the mech correctly, there would be no problem with green mech. But what I do have a problem with is the black pattern mech. So, these goblins hug the backside of the boss because, yes, that is the only, technically only safe spot. So, good luck hitting the boss if you are a back attacker. That thing drains your HP way too much. Yeah, like, come on, man. Let's get rid of that. Number six, nerf janitorial services. For some reason, people are incapable of clearing puddles well. Now, they're not a janitor in real life, probably, and they have no janitorial experiences. Please nerf it, especially in hard mode. You have to deal with that lady that's obsessed with you and you have to fear her. Come on, man. Like, why is there so many puddles? I, I know some of the puddles spawn because people are getting hit. Yada, yada. I get, I get that. Come on. Give us some slack. All right. Nobody wants to do the janitorial services anyway. Let's make it easier on the janitor. Are we good here? Uh Oh. And then, I think this is the kind of the last one. Spawn less mobs at the platform phase at X30. Why do I need a $6,000 computer to play the game? Like, seriously. I can, I, I'm lagging. Please, stop spawning so many. If we don't have an Aeromancer, Sork, or whatever, or Emperor Arcana that gets an Emperor card, you're screwed. Dude, it's just, this is not a good mechanic. I, I understand the novelty behind it. Oh, look at that. A con spawning all of his mobs. Woohoo! Yay! Oh my god! Stop. Okay? Just like in Echidna Gate 1, just like in X30 Gate 3 Akon, stop with these mobs. They're not fun to play with. Stop, stop, stop. Do better, do better, do better. Okay, moving on. They mine. Gate one. Oh man. Okay, dude, we're we're in for a long time here. I, I'm not even at the patch notes. Okay, so let me just interrupt and say, if you don't care about all this again, just look at the patch notes yourself, or you can skip. I'll put in some chapters so you can skip to my reactions to the actual patch notes. Are we good? All right, let's continue. All right. So gate one, they mine. Enough with all the knockdown patterns. Some people are slow as hell. Please. Two, nerf her helicopter spinning all the time. The rapid 180 degree twists. My sweet baby Jesus. Uh, makes back attacking a living hell. All right, number three. Oh, why are there like random patterns where she grabs everyone and yells and then drops us? It literally is a waste of time and... There's nothing you can do about it except emote. All right, number four. Give some immunity for the person with the target that the boss is aiming at. You know, the crater one. Uh... You single me out for extra work and I can get knocked down and hurt by it? Come on, man, or woman, or whatever you are. Number five. I hope we get the Korean version where you can just 
kill it before the big eyeball phase. So annoying to have to do it when the boss is at X zero. If it's at X zero, it's dead. It cannot do any more patterns. It's Mr. Smilegate. Or Mrs. or whatever you are. Okay. Gate 2. Let's see. For gate 2. Doing like a huge. Kind of like X5 replay of gate 2 here. Honestly, I don't see anything necessary to change. Uh, most wipes are due to people's idiocy with countering on red or not countering at all. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, moving on. K3. All right, Thaymine Gate 3. Okay, so it is probably, so if I had to predict, it is probably going to mention the Clash nerf that we got on accident. Base build, by the way. It is indeed easier and nicer to react to. So, good job. Number two. Uh, probably going to also get the safe zone nerf that we were promised. So many runs were wiped because no safe zone at 6 o'clock. Like, bruh. Number three, my personal beef with the Thamine after fighting him yesterday. Like, bruh. Okay, so yesterday I fought with Thamine, right? There should be a rule that you can't be aggroed two plus times in a row. How am I the only one constantly aggroed three times in a row getting tossed around like a puppet? And on top of that, my support is dead. Woohoo! Yay me! Uh, and then also, number four, maybe an HP nerf. It's still clearable without it and is much better than Echidna right now. All right. Okay, so we talked about Akan, we talked about Thaymine. All right, now let's talk about the good one, Echidna. I expect a lot of changes here, okay? Because seriously, the way they design Gate 1 and the way they design Gate 2 are just bad honestly it's bad we need some work here so let's start with gate one gate one similar to the akan thing reduce those stupid mobs we don't care about them and they are so annoying to bob and weave around case in point number two the mobs should not do any paralysis or knockdowns. They just shouldn't. Get rid of them. Make it like a chaos dungeon. We didn't like that mini boss you had to fight that constantly knocked you down four times. We don't like it now. Stop it with the mobs doing just insane crap. They are mobs for a reason. We are able to ignore them and we can blow on them and they will die. That's how a mob is supposed, is supposed to be. Okay. Uh, number three. Separate us into our actual parties for the safe spot mechanic. Video about gate one echidna rant coming soon. I will talk more about it in that video. Now, if it's fixed, then I'm probably awkward. So let's see the patch notes. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. 
All right. That's enough with gate one. Gate two. I'll, I'll be talking about it in uh, another video. So let's let's focus on gate two here. Gate two. First thing I can think of is reduce the cooldown on the charm stacks. So annoying that it take a whole minute to clear it out. Number two. Uh, something, something about the Venus. I don't know what. I don't know what, but something. Number three. Uh, let's see. Mirror to Echidna. That thing where you're passing along that light thingy to Echidna. Mech needs work. I don't know what, but it's cringe. Number four. Uh, ooh, charmed players unable to use space bar why are they dodging my sleep my good sir or ma'am or other please okay that's cringe too i'm cringe too that was kind of cringe sorry guys uh number five uh let's see Okay, let's let's start looking at the basement now. Cause I, I think other than that, everything else seems okay. Number five. Nerf the snakes crawling to Echidna. Echidna. So they take less hits. Dude, I am hitting one snake for like 30 years for it to die. Please no. Uh, ooh, this is for a hard mode specific for the mirror mech. Can you show the starting mirror position and then start the echidna moving left or right pattern? Not nearly at the same time. That's dumb. Okay. Uh, what else is there? Oh, I missed the most, the easiest part. HP nerf. 130 billion plus HP, by the way. Ha, 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 ha. Nerf the HP. Thank you very much. Okay. Whew, I'm like sweating here because I'm like kind of heated. I'm typing a lot and, you know, commentating about this. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this part of my prediction. So, you know, let's now move on to the actual patch note. So, here it is. All right, please, please be good. Heroes of Arcasia, this weekly update includes a variety of balance changes for the Akon and Thamine Legion raids, along with the Echidna as a Rose raid. Okay, we're getting this on Wednesday, August 28th. Okay, let's see. Akon. 8-1. Lower the damage dealt to players during the safe zone mech when Morug throws his spear. Okay, what does this mean? It, is this the thing I'm thinking about? The, the, the one I actually mentioned. Um, the one where he drops the spear down and it's the safe zone and you're getting tick damage. Right? Lower the damage dealt? Alright, perfect. So we're off to a good start. Let's keep on going. Reduce the amount of HP Marag recovers per failed shield destruction. Wait, he had a failed shield destruction? Oh, is this at the, the near the end? Okay, okay. I mean, okay, sure. I mean, it, it's helpful, definitely. I, I think um, new players will definitely benefit from this. So, perfect. Reduce the effect of corrosion and plague wound debuffs. That, yes, perfect, perfect. Exactly what we wanted. Stop with these stupid ass debuffs. Oh, I said a YouTube unfriendly word. I'm sorry, sponsors. Come to me. I promise I won't curse again. I'm just really heated right now. Uh, reduce the damage Morug deals to players after imprisoning. Perfect. Okay, so good, good stuff. Good stuff. So not really stuff that I necessarily wrote because these are kind of like, okay, you know, like just like quality of life adjustments. Uh, the safe zone mech when... Morug throws one or two spears, change to only throw two spears. Okay, so I, okay. Veteran alert. 
I didn't know it only threw one spear. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Oops. So, and this is perfect that it throws two spears now. Awesome. Oh, perfect. What we mentioned. Lowered the stacker damage required during the stacker check mechanic. All right, perfect. So, so far, we're getting a lot of the stuff that we wished for. Gate who? All right, let's see. Decrease the amount of plague meter gained when getting hit by con. Okay, perfect. QOL. Change the damage dealing mechanism, mechanism for hiding in the shadows mechanic. They will now in receive increased damage for every time they fail to follow the shadow correctly. Oh, I haven't even thought about this. This is the lantern one. Um, so I guess you don't get petrified anymore? Okay, perfect. Awesome. In the lantern relay... Oh, actually, I think it does get uh, petrified, but you just get increased damage instead of just dying. So good. In the lantern relay, keep away pattern. So this is the football pattern. The fear debuff given by the monster decaying kin. Okay, so this one's the green blob I was talking about. The green... Uh, what did I call it again? Because that was YouTube friendly. Shice. Whatever. I don't know. Anyway, this is good. Fear will be shorter. Perfect. Remove the paralysis effect from some of the patterns in the zero HP mechanic. Okay, nice. So I didn't even think about this. But yeah, it's kind of annoying to deal with paralysis during this zero HP mechanic. So awesome. So they didn't fix the kind of destruction check, but can't always get what we want. Okay, whatever. Change the damage dealing mechanism. Why do I keep saying mechanism? Mechanism. When a con disappears to swing his scythe to a random player, now a player receives critical damage when hit by the same pattern twice okay nice so less of uh deaths occurring so i guess that makes up for you know the destruction check not being nerfed because more people will be alive increase the time for counterattacking. okay nice this is also very nice we need though we need those great okay gate three greatly decrease the damage of black laser sh oh thank god okay so we did mention this thank the heavens Yes, please. Slightly increase the time available for counterattack. Okay, nice. They're really making it counterattack friendly. Normal. Decrease the amount of plague meter increased. Okay, nice. Okay, so very good. QOL. Decrease the amount of damage dealt when hit by the guillotine. Okay, so I guess you don't get a one shot anymore. Nice. I'll take that. Decrease the slow debuff. Okay, perfect. So already all this stuff, except for, you know, these two. Are stuff that we asked for. Um, change some of the patterns to deal paralysis instead of push. Perfect, perfect. I love that. Now you can actually use paralysis immunity to dodge some skills. The respawn time for plague spores on the map has greatly increased. Okay, nice. Good for the janitor. Thank you. In the curse mechanic, which can summon one of three colors, the black curse no longer appears. This is exactly what we mentioned. You know, it's really toxic that some people are able to hit the boss, the ones that actually have the black curse, while the others cannot. Changed a con scythe damage to gradually increase based on times hit in the peekaboo pattern when a con disappears. Okay, so again, they're really trying to make people stay alive all the way to the end. And decrease the max HP of zombie players. Perfect, perfect. I love that. Okay, the so con overall, great stuff. Echidna. Okay, Echidna. Let's see this. Gate 1. Decrease the amount of damage from the dragon's overhead flame attacks. Prevent players from falling when they get hit. Okay, I mean, sure, whatever. I mean, I just don't like this pattern in general, right? Like, it's not really the damage that I was really worried about. It's just that it's so annoying. Right? It's so annoying. You have to deal with so many other things, and now you got to deal with this shit. Oh, sorry, I'm YouTube friendly. Uh, but this. Do Shire. And uh, the Demon Legion now only invades two times instead of three during the battle with Nargil. What the heck does this mean? Two times instead of three. Is this the um, safe spot mech where instead of the red thing or the black thing moving twi or three times, it's now two times, which shortens the time? I'm assuming that's what this means. Let me know in the comments if that's wrong. I'm really curious to know. What this actually means but anyway after the advent of agris we have increased the range that sensor can be detected in the pattern where sensor has to be found oh, i mean okay so do all stuff perfect hard mode in the battle with narkeel manipulating the sensor now creates a red aura around the player's body to make it a little easier to know the condition 
of not being able to manipulate the sensor. I, I'm assuming this is at the end where you got to pick up that jar or whatever. Is that what this means? Again, leave it in the comments. I, I don't know. They make it so difficult to understand. Like, who's Narkeel? Is that the boss's name? I had no idea. Sensor? What the heck is that? <laughs> anyway, let's move on to gate two. I'll have a lot more to talk about gate one in my next video, so make sure to subscribe to that again. Gate two, normal and hard mode. Modified effects of whisper seduction and dominance of seduction debuffs. Uh, 62, 30 seconds. Perfect. I love that. So it reduced to half. Good. Players will no longer be hit by friend. Okay, nice. Finally. So if you're charmed and you throw out a sidereal, the sidereal is not going to whack you and kill you. Good. We have reduced the number of attacks to release a player from the debuff petrification by 50%. Thank the Lord. So many people get petrified. It's so nice to be actually able to free them in time. Updated the debuff petrification so that players don't die if their release failed. All right, nice. Great. When players fail the pattern of having to hit the energy sphere fired from the mirror to a kidnap during the battle, it no longer raid wipes immediately. Oh, yes. Lovely. That is so good. Oh, my goodness. But instead, wipes the raid when it fails twice. Amazing. Amazing. So you get to free them. You get, a, you get one chance. Free them all. And then, you know, continue as normal. And then it only wipes you after the second time. Which, by then, you deserve it. Awesome, awesome. I really like that. This is one of the best changes so far. Um, and it's exactly what I wanted. Increase the cycle timing when fly traps are created by Echidna. What the heck is cycle timing? Can anybody tell me what the heck this means? What is cycle timing? They, they need to work on kind of their, their English, not gonna lie. It's, it's kind of confusing to, to understand. Maybe it's just me. Let me know in the comments. Uh, decrease the amount of damage from the patterns where players should or should not look at the boss during the paddle with the giant echidna. Amazing. Good. Do well. That's amazing. Players no longer die when failing a clash during the battle of echidna in the underground space, but instead receive mass. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, you shouldn't be failing the clash because most likely that's the end of the raid, right? Because you probably need to kill the snake as soon as possible. So you'll fail anyway, but... It's kind of weird that they put it this way. But let's move on. I guess it gives a, a second chance of kind of, okay, you failed, but now you don't have a player that's dead, too. When Echidna's gauge fills during the battle in the underground space, snakes try to reach Echidna. The number of attacks to kill the snake have decreased by 20%. Yeah! Additionally, red snakes don't come out anymore. Perfect. Perfect. It still makes for a interesting raid, but less of the annoying crap. I love it. It's most of the things that I addressed in my notepad have come true. Great. All right, let's keep going. Hard mode. In the pattern where players need to link the energy sphere. Okay, same thing, I guess. Oh, small flowers will no longer be produced when two characters stand on top of one. Ooh, okay. Okay. So this, they, they change this to the normal mode. So you can just stand wherever. I love that. That is amazing. Great job. When Echidna's HP reaches zero in the underground battle, the catch pattern was modified so that the snake sign could be seen by others rather than just the cod player. Oh, nice. Great stuff. That is good. So now everybody can see it and everybody can know exactly where to counter. No point in somebody needing to type it. Anything that needs typing is absolutely stupid, in my opinion. In the underground battle, the silence debuff is now released quickly in the jump rope pattern where players avoid the slow spreading red wavelength. Okay, nice. So yes, you do get silence, so you can't use any skills during this jump rope pattern. But now they are going to release it quickly so you can use skills as soon as it's over. That's amazing. Good job. Wait, that's it? Uh, hello? Uh, hello? Uh, HP nerf? Hello? Uh, uh, where, where, what? Yo! Am I reading this correctly? Where the heck is the HP nerf? It's a hundred and... <sighs> Hold on, guys. Give me a minute. Okay. So I'm back. And I'm still frustrated. So we needed an HP nerf. And I, don't get me wrong. I'm grateful for all this stuff. 
right? This will help you to get to basement a lot easier. Uh, but a lot of people still don't do any damage. Why do we not have an HP nerf? People are still going to be unable to clear Echidna, by the way. Like, I don't understand these changes. Like, yeah, congratulations. We're able to get to basement phase uh, more consistently. But if you're unable to reach X0 by the, the deadline, the, the time that it takes, it's over, right? So if there's no changes to its HP, no changes to our damage, then it's going to be the same thing. Um, okay, you know what? Ah, let's, let, let's just see. Let me, I'll try it out this week and see how it is with the pugs. Let's move on to Thaymine before we wrap this up. Gate 1. When Kilaniza, the Dark Worshipper, inflicts a status effect and grabs the player, this status effect will no longer affect players with status effect immunity. Is this the thing that I was mentioning actually in my notepad where that random mechanic where she grabs everybody no matter where they are and then she just drops them and that's it. That's the, that's the pattern. If that's that, great. Now you can actually immune it and you can DPS her during that time. I'll take it. Whatever. If it's that. Okay. We're hard mode. This thing can now die at the same time as normal mode before the large eye pattern. Okay, nice. So we got the Korea changes. Perfect. It doesn't seem like any of my other stuff made it through. Whatever. People still are able to kill your gate one fine, so I guess there's not really much changes needed. Gate two. Hard mode. Valanac, Herald of the End, will no longer recover HP after certain patterns. That's it. So similar to me, I yeah, I, I guess Smilegate and AGS agree with me. Gate two is pretty okay. You know, it's pretty fair. Not really much of a problem there, so nice that you know, we can kill the boss slightly quicker. A3. All right, here's the big one. Reduce the difficulty of Clash minigame. All right, so we already expected this. So base build, by the way, everyone. Uh, clear example of a base build. Increase the number of safe zones remaining in the combat area at the time. Okay, so again, with the safe zones, I mentioned this as well. Now you are able to not get screwed over if you stand at the 6 o'clock position when Thaymine does his one-shot pattern. Perfect. Okay. Adjusted the attack range of Thaymine the Light Queller's attack pattern of quickly moving forward slash backwards while swinging his sword so that the players will not take damage from behind Thaymine. Is this the one where he's throwing out his like pulsating things and then the blue pulsating at the end and it's focusing one player? Because if that's the case, thank the lord. You don't know how many times I'm at the boss's back and I'm hitting the boss, and I, I'm mindful of it now, but so many times you just get stacks randomly and you're behind the boss. If that's the one, good on them for fixing this. But other than that, they haven't fixed anything. Okay, well, it's still clearable. I'm more disappointed about Gate 2 Echidna not getting an HP nerf. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, we'll end it with the general and bug fixes. So let's see here. Players can now use an event power pass without having trusted status. Wow. That, that just that just beat everything. These this 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 one sentence beat everything. Like I didn't need all of this crap. This one sentence really just that's it. We're good. We're good now. Ten out of ten patch. Our team will review data feedback and any impact to decide any next steps along with any adjustments to the trusted system. Perfect. This one bullet point. GG. Ten out of ten. What can you say? Fixed an issue where equipping essential loose fit pants skin piece changes. The, I don't care about that. Fixed an issue when occasional. Okay, I don't care. Fixed two minor market UI. Okay, I don't care. So overall, this is the the win. Thay mine is a win. Echidna is half a win, and Akan is a win. So overall, a win. But I'm really disappointed in this this little girl over here. But let me know what you guys think. Thank you all so much for sticking around. This video is 40 minutes long. I'm so sorry. Uh, I hope you guys are watching this in the background uh, or whatever. But, you know, that's just how it be. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more videos. And until next time, 
I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.